Hey guys, in this video, I want to talk about this laptop that I've been using for the past year for, well, pretty much everything really from general work to editing videos to gaming and also VR. This is the Razer Blade 15 2020 base model. If you're thinking about buying this laptop now in late 2021, maybe because it's on a steep discount compared to the latest models, I hope this video will help you with your purchase decision. Mine comes with a 144Hz Full HD screen, 10th gen Intel i7-10750 processor, RTX 2060 laptop GPU with 6GB of VRAM and 16GB of DDR4 RAM. It came stocked with 512GB of SSD storage but it has a free M.2 slot so I added a 2TB Samsung 970 EVO Plus SSD. I like that it's got lots of ports, it has 3 USB 3.1 Gen 1 Type-A ports, 1 USB 3.2 Gen 2 Type-C port and a Thunderbolt 3 USB Type-C port on the right so you can run up to 2 4K displays off of it. You can't charge your laptop with the USB Type-C ports, that only comes with the advanced model but Razer provides a beast of a power supply with a proprietary angled connector. Other IOs include 1 HDMI 2.0 for output to your TV, 3.5mm auxiliary TRRS input and a RJ45 Ethernet port. Now that we've got the specs out of the way, the reason I like this laptop and why I've ported over my entire workflow to this platform is because compared to other laptops, it's the closest I can get to a MacBook experience and in some ways, it's better than a MacBook Pro. I wanted to do gaming and VR but that wasn't possible on the MacBook Pro and I always felt restricted by the number of ports on the MacBook Pro. I always had to use an adapter for something so the sheer number of ports on the Blade 15 was a huge upgrade for me in terms of convenience. Its build quality is also closer to the Mac with a unibody aluminum chassis for the screen and housing so it doesn't feel plasticky and cheap and for me its durability is beyond question because I actually did drop it before. <laughs> This was sitting on my table, this table, and I tripped on the power cord and this thing just fell onto the ground. I was so worried that something got broken, but everything still works fine. The only damage was to the uni body. Some dents and chips on the corners, so it looks less pretty than before, but other than that, nothing major. I mean, it's still working for me 100%. If it had been a plastic chassis, maybe I would have ended up with, I don't know, a broken screen or a cracked housing. The Blade 15's typing experience is also much closer to the MacBook. It's got a spacious chiclet style keyboard with decent key travel and I felt really comfortable typing with it. It's also got a huge glass trackpad. Compared to the trackpads of other laptops, this one is so much more spacious and is located right in the middle which allows you to reach it easily with your left or right fingers. Now, even though it has a last gen graphics card, the RTX 2060 laptop version, it more than meets my needs as far as video editing, VR, or gaming is concerned. For video editing, I use DaVinci Resolve 17, and so far, it has been pretty smooth when editing 1080p or 4K video. Playback for 1080p video is buttery smooth, playback for 4K footage is somewhat smooth, there's no noticeable judder or buffering, but sometimes if it's playing back multiple tracks, there will be some dropped frames and this happens usually very briefly at first, but this has more to do with not having enough RAM cause mine has 16GB and my Firefox tabs alone use up like 4GB worth of DDR4 RAM, sometimes more. So combined with all the other background tasks, well, let's just say that I simply need more RAM. For gaming, I have no real complaints. I can run the latest games like Cyberpunk 2077, albeit at medium settings, not ultra. But 
I can run my favorite games like The Witcher 3 at ultra settings at 60 frames per second. As somebody who played this game on the PS4, this is a tremendous upgrade. Couldn't be more happy connecting the blade to my TV and just gaming off of it. And yeah, I use my PS4 controller for that, still not used to gaming with a mouse. Console gamers. The RTX 2060 supports ray tracing, but I don't really turn that on for my games because it'll just throttle frame rates. I mean, you'll get better results with the newer 3 Series NVIDIA GPUs, but it's still not something that most people will want to do with a gaming laptop. I can also run my VR of the Blade 15. With most VR apps, you won't experience much of an issue. You can still do some pretty decent VR gaming with this, but of course, this being a laptop, there are some limitations in place compared to full desktop VR. The thing with VR gaming is your VR headset typically has two screens, one for each eye and the GPU has to render the graphics separately for both screens, so it's double the load on your GPU. This is why most VR apps don't have huge graphical requirements. I mean, some games still look like they were made in the early 2000s and can run easily on the Blade 15. But if you're running AAA titles like, say, Half-Life Alex, you're going to have to deal with lower frame rates, genre, and thermal throttling, even at low graphics settings. Bear in mind that my Blade 15 2020 uses the RTX 2060 GPU, and that has just 6 gigabytes of VRAM, and that has an impact. Not gonna lie, you might get better results with RTX laptop GPUs that have 8 gigabytes of VRAM, but since it's often not possible to change the GPU in laptops, if yours only has 6 gigabytes, the next best thing you can do is to upgrade your RAM. That is actually my next goal to upgrade this from 16 gigabytes to 32 gigabytes of DDR4 RAM or higher. Still, VR gaming on this laptop, even in its current configuration, is quite acceptable to me. Now, there are some things that I don't like about this laptop, like how loud its fan is, its battery life is also not the best, it has a 4221 mAh battery, and that's not a lot. When I'm at the cafe running this at medium performance settings, I got about 1.5 to 2 hours of use before it died. If you need more battery out of it, you can somewhat double the battery by setting this to battery saver mode, which dumps down the processing power, then turn off Bluetooth and reduce screen brightness. This way, it'll give you around 2.5 hours to 3 hours of mileage. Still, it's not great compared to the 5 to 8 hours of battery I got with my MacBook Pro. That being said, it's been almost a year, and overall, I am quite happy that I got this laptop, even with newer models in the market. It doesn't feel like I've missed out on much because it already meets my needs. Furthermore, I can easily upgrade its storage and RAM. When I got my 2TB SSD, I just opened the back panel, put in the new part into the free M.2 slot, and that's it. Easy. So whether you're a gamer or a content creator, if you don't have the budget for the latest laptops but you still want great performance, upgradability, plenty of ports, and experience closer to the MacBook Pro than most other laptops, get this one, especially if you can find this at a huge discount. Now, why did I pick the base model over the advanced model? Even though that one has an SD card slot, better GPU, battery life, thermos, and screen. I'm going to be straight with you and say that cost is a factor, but it's more to do with what I need as a content creator and what most creators need is expandable storage. That model only has one M.2 slot, so you can't add internal storage as easily. Yes, you can sacrifice read-write speeds and plug an external SSD, but for video editing, I prefer my write speeds to be as zippy as possible, so I'm not ready to make that compromise. External SSD is really great only for storing footage that I'm not going to use. The advanced model also doesn't have an Ethernet port, so if I'm moving around and the building has bad Wi-Fi, I won't have the option to plug straight into the router without an adapter. In terms of thermals, 
I managed that by using a laptop cooling stand so that the laptop doesn't overheat and throttle its performance much. Now, you will still get some throttling, but it's not going to slow things down by a lot. And in terms of battery life, most of the time, I'm going to need it to perform at full spec. So my blade usually stays plugged in to my power socket. So the base model meets my personal needs better, and some of its shortcomings can either be compensated for or isn't that big of a deal for me. So that's my take on whether you should buy the Razer Blade 15 2020 in 2021. Hope you enjoyed this video, and if you did, smash like and share. If you don't want to miss out on more content from me, hit subscribe right now and ring the notifications bell because this is the only way YouTube will notify you of new videos from this channel. Of course, guys, let me know in the comments if you want to see more laptop-related content from me. A big shout out to everybody on this list who supports this channel by contributing a dollar or more per month through the crowdfunding website Patreon. If you want to have your name on that list too, do join me on Patreon. Not only can you help keep this show going, you gain some pretty cool rewards too, like having your name displayed at the end of every video. And at the highest tier level, you can even get free merch. So link is in the box down below if you want to help support my work. I've also got a Discord server, so do join if you want to hang out. More videos coming up soon, so don't go away.